What's going on everyone? I hope you were all having a fantastic day. So as you may have heard, towards the end of last week, we did get another proposal from the House Democrats, and boy is it a big one. Big surprise, I know. So today I wanna give you some very important updates on what exactly is in that new bill, and where parties are currently leaning, and how that could affect your next stimulus check. So if you wanna stay updated on everything that's going on, then be sure to subscribe and hit the like button if you do get value out of today's video. Let's jump right into it. All right, so like I said, at the end of last week, we saw a new bill get introduced in the Senate known as the Monthly Economic Crisis Support Act. Very catchy name, check. I have seen some people confuse this with the Emergency Money for the People Act since there are a lot of similarities, but this is an entirely separate proposal and it will likely garner a lot of attention since it was proposed by some pretty big names in the Senate, including Kamala Harris and Bernie Sanders. Now, regardless of how you feel about either of those individuals, this is important to note since a lot of the past stimulus bills we have seen proposed were from lesser known senators and members of Congress. And while their ideas may make their way into the final bill, it's really the top leaders who have the most influence on their peers that will influence the final say. After all, this is politics as sad as that may be, and you may be surprised how some of these longer term senators and members of Congress can influence their peers so much on their decision making. So let's look at exactly what is in the Monthly Economic Crisis Support Act. Very catchy. Similar to the Emergency Money for the People Act, this would give everyone $2,000 every single month that is completely not taxable and is viewed as a tax credit. But the biggest difference with this bill is that it is retroactive, meaning it would pay you for March, April, May, which we're in right now, June, and so on and so forth. These payments would continue for three months after the Department of Health and Human Services ends the health emergency. Keep in mind that this is different than the national emergency, which could be lifted at any time by the president. However, it is very likely that the health emergency will last much longer than the national emergency, and these payments will continue for three months after that ends. So under this proposal, who knows how long these $2,000 per month payments could be coming to your bank account. So that means that individuals would get $2,000 per month, married couples filing jointly would get $4,000 per month, and even dependents would also get an additional $2,000 per month and you can claim up to a maximum of three deductions or three children. So what this means is that if you're a married couple who falls within the income thresholds that we'll talk about in a second, and you claim three children as dependent, then you would receive $10,000 per month completely tax-free under this proposal. And on top of that, you would also be paid back to March. So you would receive $10,000 for March, $10,000 for April, $10,000 for May or the current month we're in, and so on and so forth. Okay, now about those income thresholds because they're a little bit different than some of the previous bills that we've looked at. So individuals have to make $100,000 a year or less in order to qualify, head of households have to make $150,000 a year or less, and married couples can make up to $200,000 a year or less in order to qualify for this proposal. Now, similar to the CARES Act, which included the $1,200 checks that hopefully you have received by now, this does include a 10% phase out, meaning for every $1,000 above that income limit, you would receive $100 less per month. So the two biggest differences that you've obviously seen from the CARES Act to this bill is the one recurring monthly payments, as well as the inclusion of dependents, which was a large criticism of the last stimulus bill. However, this bill also has a provision for non-residents, which includes people who are not citizens of this country, but still pay taxes in some way. So even if you're not a US citizen, as long as you pay taxes and have some social security number or other form of identification number, you would likely qualify under this proposal. Another provision in this proposal proposal that improves on the CARES Act is one that keeps debt collectors from taking your stimulus check. Now, you may not be aware of this if it did not affect you, but on the last round, what was happening is a lot of people were getting their $1,200 stimulus check, but then before they could actually get to it, a debt collector would come in and take that money in order to pay back the debts that that person owed. Now, maybe you think this is okay for the debt collector to do, or maybe you think this is completely immoral, but either way, this proposal eliminates that and bars debt collectors from taking this stimulus check in repayment for your debts. This means that even if you are deep in debt and are being harassed by debt collector after debt collector, they have no access to these funds, and that will probably solve a lot of headaches for a lot of people. So obviously, this is the first bill from the Senate that has some sort of direct payment. A few weeks ago, we did look at the Patriot Pay Act that was proposed in the Senate as well, but this was more of an incentive for people to go back to work and would give them a raise when they do get back to work. However, we talked about some of the issues with this proposal and the main issue that for a lot of people, it's not safe to go back to work yet 
meaning they would have absolutely no benefit from this proposal. So this new idea is the monthly or recurring payments that a lot of people are looking for and need right now. And it does have some pretty large name backers that can push it a lot further than some of these smaller bills that we've seen before. Now, with that being said, what are the chances of this actually getting passed? Because that's always an important thing to talk about, since again, it's just a proposal that needs to go through the House of Representatives, the Senate, and then be signed off by the president in the White House. Contrary to what we had been hearing, it seems like the White House is actually slowly shifting their opinion in favor of another form of direct payments. However, the Senate is still holding strong on their opposition to direct payments, so it'll be very interesting to see what happens on that front. But again, this bill does have a lot of support from a lot of big names, and while they may not control the Senate right now necessarily, they do have the ability to send the message that the large majority wants some form of direct payment or even a recurring direct payment. So as we've said several times, it's really important to focus on the fundamentals of these proposals and not look at the numbers themselves. Because if you ask me, I don't see that $2,000 per month number actually getting through the Senate. And possibly it might not even get through the House depending on where the final cost of this actually comes in. Even more moderate Democrats in the House might not go for something like this if it comes in at a multi-trillion dollar price price tag, which is pretty likely. But here's what we're most likely looking at. The massive multi-trillion dollar bill from the biggest names in the House is expected to be proposed early this week. And as I've said before, it's likely that all of these proposals that we've been hearing so much about will be chopped up into small pieces and will sort of make their way into the final bill. However, that leaves the question of what will be the fundamental base of that final bill? Well, something like this coming out from the Senate reiterates the fact that a lot of people are in support of the direct payments, meaning it is more likely that the final bill could be based on this idea. From there, this larger bill would pick up bits and pieces of the other bills and hopefully gain support in the process. If you've ever wondered how a bill can get from a few dozen pages to well over a thousand, it's because the ideas proposed by so many different people slowly get absorbed by these larger proposed bills by the biggest names in the Senate and House of Representatives. So so with some alterations to that $2,000 per month number, it's very possible that something like this could pass the House. But then it moves on to the Senate, and that is a very different story. But like I said, the White House has started to shift their position on direct payments within the next stimulus bill. And we have heard from several advisors within the White House that the president is starting to see the need for another round of direct payments. And while the president is simply the person who signs off when all the hard work has been finished, they do have a lot of influence over members of the Senate, especially considering the current political environment, and it is possible that they could negotiate and find a compromise that everyone could live with. But didn't I just say in my last video that the White House economic advisor said that negotiations have been put on pause? Well, yeah, that is true for the White House, but again, in order for a bill to make it to the president's desk, it has to go through debates and negotiations in the House of Representatives and the Senate, which could take several weeks. So we're really not looking at them making a decision on this until probably the end of May. The good thing about this bill is that if it were to get passed or at least something like it, it is retroactive. So while the next month might be a struggle financially in order to get by, at least you would have that retrospective pay coming in to help pick up the slack on those overdue bills. So in a nutshell, this is pretty similar to the Emergency Money for the People's Act, but it would be retrospective and it would also be slightly different on the income limits and include other individuals like dependents and non-residents. So I'm curious what you think of all this and if you think this is a more or less realistic proposal than the Emergency Money for the People's Act or any of the other proposals that we've talked about here on the channel. Some have estimated that something like this would cost anywhere between three and four trillion dollars, which is a very, very large number. But I know this is a very polarizing topic and some people think that we need to take on this debt, while others think that it is simply not worth it and we need to pursue alternative options. So let me know what you think of this down in the comment section below. <laughs> Remember that while all of us would love to get a million dollars a year, there are other factors that need to be accounted for. And if you want a deep look at why we can't just get a million dollars a year each, then be sure to check out my last video where I break that down as simply as I can. So with that being said, be sure to let me know what you think of all this down in the comment section and use the first link in the description to get your two free stocks from Webull when you deposit $100 or more, one of which is worth $1,400. And that promotion is ending in the next few days, I believe. So be sure to take advantage of that and you'll also help support my channel, which I seriously appreciate so much. Since we will be having a lot of large, important updates throughout the week, make sure you subscribe and hit the like button if you did get value out of today's video. As always, I appreciate your time so much. So thank you for taking time out of your day to watch my video. Take it easy and I'll see you in the next one.